Hi guys, Build On Purpose. This week we're adjusting fuel floats. If you're new to the channel, the channel is about DIY level modifications. Um, if that's interest to you, uh, it might be worth you subscribing. Also, Build On Purpose can be found on Facebook, Instagram, and we are now on Twitter. So, in the previous video, uh, I swapped out the SM needles and put the SB needles in. If you missed that, you can click on the card. Uh, as a, an outcome of that, um, the, the, a, the AFRs across all the ranges were very close to where they needed to be, but they were all offset by a little amount. When I did have the SM needles in, a band-aid fix I did do was raise the um, fuel float to lift the fuel level higher in the nozzle um, to richen the mixture. That that was to try, um, it worked a little bit. It may it adjusted it about a, a 0.5 of an AFR across the range. So coincidentally, the SB needles seem to be about a, a 0.5 to one AFR too high. So I'm hoping that if we adjust the fuel floats back down to the factory spec, that we will be very close to where we be because the SB needles, they look like they're fairly good. They're just all offset a little bit rich. So, so the air fuel filter's off. Uh, I got that off because um, it's not necessary if you just want to set it up by measurement. But what I want, I might do is um, use my float sink tool, which sits on the front of the f uh, fuel bowl, just to do a verification. I've got these tools, so I always use them. I love using these tools. So um, I did do a video with my favourite tools as well for SU tuning, so I'll uh, flash another card up for that as well. Uh, it's important to note we are working with fuel here, so safety is key. Just be careful. Um, well, my, this has been sitting for a while, so it's unlikely that much fuel splash out, but always just be careful. Um, we don't want any garage fires or any or any, in, any injury occurring. Uh, what I will do is I'll disconnect the fuel hoses first, because you could leave them on and turn it around and work at a lower level, but I, I think setting these things, you need to get up at a, a good eye height to be able to do it. So I'll take all the fuel hoses off and then we'll um, get these fuel floats out. Right, so these are the fuel floats. I do have a bit of fuel in here. I'll have to drain. Um, so I use cork gaskets, which came with the Z Therapy kit. But that's it there. So you can see the float. So again, these are the round top S used for the early model 240Z. So the floats do vary a bit. You can see the jet in there. Um, there's a little little tab in there that touches on the the the, the jet that alters the flow. Um, also, be careful the pin that holds the the fulcrum pin that holds the, the fuel float in is not held in, uh, it's held in by uh, the case, like the actual body, so it can fall out at any time, so be very careful. Um, but what we do to adjust that tab is we adjust the these bits here. Uh, you can, oops, sorry, get better. So you, what you can do to adjust that tab is you adjust, you can, you adjust um, the fuel float by bent, slightly bending these things, and it's important to remember that when you do this, you need this to be as orientated as correctly as possible in the fuel bowl for that height. Don't just go bending it down because then that won't sit square, uh, sit correctly in the bowl and it might jam. And if you get it, if it jams, it'll hold the jet open or not function properly. Um, most height references are referenced to the ungasketed face of this housing here. So let me carefully take this off. I have heard um, someone did, I can't remember where I read, someone recommended siliconing the gasket to the top of the, the fuel bowl, which seems like a good idea to me um, because they get very brittle um, and easy to tear. And particularly, I got these from the States. If you tear one, it's gonna take a while to get a new one. So I wish I had uh, done that in the first instance. So there's two ways you, well, you, you can, there's two ways you can confirm whether the jet operates. You can either, I, I, I blow through air pressure, um, just a low air pressure, um, as opposed to just going by eye. So it's simple. I don't know if you could hear that, but you could hear it stop operation. As I said earlier, I've got mine set so the the um, the float actually operates at a higher level, um, lifting the fuel up in the nozzle, enriching it. So uh, what I have is this. This is just a depth a gauge I made. It's made out of a 11 by 31 trimming molding for, for house construction. Um, general rule of thumb is you want to make sure that um, when you stick that in there, the fuel float is flat and it's starting to touch this nozzle here. But that should get you um, for, for the for these kind of jets. If you have different jets, like I think there's gross jets, 
Um, if they're available still and you put those in, they operate differently. So it's always good to check rather than just go whack a measurement in, is just actually check the operation once you've adjusted it. So I'll, I'll go about adjusting this now. So I've got one adjusted. It's a bit of buggerizing around. It makes, um, sometimes it makes EFI uh, a little bit more appealing, but um, so I'm mucking around. If you can, I don't know if you can hear this, but I'll blow on it and I'll lower it, um, bring the float up to where it's got to be, and you should be able to hear the the the, the, the air coming out of the jet and it gets closed off. <gasps> Always check the operation in the how it's going to be in the fuel bowl, otherwise you'll get a skew result, but. That should be pretty close to where we need to be. So bust out the other one. I'll I'll do the same on the other one, and we'll install it and put the the float sinks on the front, and we'll see if we're close. It is a bit of a trial and error, and if you know if there's some, you, know, you might have to pull them off and have a couple of goes at it. Um, some people might wonder why we these use screw threads and not uh, bolts. Well, that's um, because you're dealing with soft alloys. If you had a bolt head there, there's opportunity for you to do it up too tight and strip the thread. And it's also worth noting that um, with the screws, there is always, um, particularly on the flute bo float bowls, there is always um, got to have under the screw a, a metal washer. Um, for the side where there's the um, the tab that holds the, the fuel line, that's metal. Uh, and then from these these ones over here, there's also a metal washer. So make sure you put you know you don't take them off and get them mixed up because these ones don't have a washer on them. Um, that's again. Because you're dealing with soft alloy, it's, have a, it's good to have a metal face against it. Otherwise, if you keep doing up the screw, you might scratch out the, the alloy. So, just a, a keen little thing there to note. So, just looking at these puppies, the back one is quite low. It's about 9 millimeters, And the front one, oh, it's not a flight. It's about 13 and a half. Well, so, some neat little directions that come here with the um, float sink according to... Um, the standard is supposed to be 14 mil above the, the level of the the top of the fuel block. So, uh, front one's got to come up a smidgen, or not at all, and the back one, yeah, needed a bit of work on. So, spend a bit of time uh, adjusting these these floats. Uh, the back bowl took a bit of effort to get because it seemed to have a. Um, I couldn't get the float perfectly vertical, and it kept. Um, getting stuck in the bowl and filling up the fuel bowl almost or to full because it must have um, lifted up a bit and got jammed and didn't close off the the um, the valve. So they're both set now. Um, I, I couldn't, I, I just went with the 13 and a half on front and back. Um, that's not exactly right, but it's a little bit less, which uh, means that you know, I'm heading towards a, a leaner condition, which is what I'm after. So that's all done, bit of trial and error, mucking around. This gaskets probably take a little bit of a flogging, so I hope they stay together. Uh, so that's uh, how I adjust the, the fuel floats in the Hitachi SUs. I hope uh, someone had uh, was able to take something away from that. A uh, bit defeated by time. Despite my best efforts, I'm not going to get around to doing a test drive um, and reviewing the data in, in this episode. Feature it in the next episode along. In the end, I got both to sit around the 13 to 13 and a half millimetres, which uh, I, I think is okay. Uh, it's not quite what the factory specs are, but what I am trying to do is get it leaner. So I guess when get around to doing a bit of um, testing and data logging, that'll certainly determine whether it's done the right thing. Uh, so wrapping up, summary, if you're doing this yourself, gotta have patience and expect to um, go back a few times to get it right, uh, unless you're really good at it, and just just to have patience. Don't, don't rush it, need patience for this. Uh, so if you like that, um, there'll be more videos like that so it might be worth considering subscribing also uh, like this video and if uh, you got comments love to hear them. Uh, that's it for me catch us later <laughs>